Do you write spaghetti code? The type of code that horrifies everyone who sees it. The type of code that would send Alan Turing into hiding. Well, if you do, then this video is for you. So how do you turn this into this? Well, I read these two books to find out. And in the next few minutes, we're going to fix your code with some of the stuff in them. Now, I can hear you already. Well, well my, my code, code is actually, actually really, really clean. clean. Trust me, I thought that too. But I still took some great stuff away from these books, so stick around. I have distilled these books. Hold on. These books into a list of seven things. Starting with the simple stuff and building into some stuff that I never thought about until I read these. Right, let's get started. Name your variables properly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Christ alive. This is going to be an interesting video. I've been reading these books and looking at a lot of bad code. And one thing that just baffles me is why people use names like J or count one and count two for variables. What do they mean? What data do they represent? We aren't trying to name Elon Musk's next child here, lads. Okay. We're trying to make readable code. And that means having variables that explain themselves. A variable like J can become jump height and count one and count two can become play account and item count. They're little changes, but they make your code way more readable. Also, if you want to search for something in the code without knowing the exact variables, it helps if you can figure out what the variable name is going to be without knowing it. Perfect code should read like English. For example, right, while player underwater is equal to true, uh, we're going to go to the audio script, play an audio hit called swimming sound. Reads like English. You don't have to be a good programmer to be able to figure out what that does. Name your variables. One last thing on this. Low level, um, used to be low level learning, uh, did a video breaking down the frankly shocking source code behind 7-zip and how it made life hard for developers the developers of 7-zip uh, uh, to keep their code you know secure and error free i'll link it below if anyone's interested it's actually a really good watch keep your format the same right so this is for all you people in teams get a bloody format agreed upon and stick to it if i can tell who has written the script by the style of the format then you're doing something wrong Stuff like writing a function like this or like this, it doesn't matter which one you pick, just pick one and stick to it. It adds needless confusion to a project. If you start changing up naming schemes, indentations and script size, it's just easier to keep it the same. Oh lord, give me strength. For the next time I see someone with 100 scripts in their project, 99 of which are 50 lines long, and then they have one which is 20,000 lines. That's 20,000 line Titan. How on earth are you going to troubleshoot that one? Don't do this. Keep all your scripts a similar size. There's no cutoff. Just, you know, keep an eye on your scripts. And if they're getting a bit beefy, then split them up. Smaller scripts are easier for my chimp mind to process. Avoid, Avoid repetition. repetition. Okay, this is the classic newbie mistake. Writing the same code with slight variations 10 times like this. Now, there's nothing wrong with this script exactly. It'll do the job. It's readable. We know what it's trying to do. But imagine that you need to change this a bit. Like, you best get your quill out because there's a lot of copy and paste work coming your way. Don't do this. I don't like extra work and you shouldn't either. And keep your scripts free of duplication. Replace this with this, it'll be easier to modify later on. It's also a little bit more readable, so do this. Functions should do what they say on the tin. This one ties in with the variables of the actual names that I mentioned earlier. If I make a function called calculate output for my calculator for the last video, then this function should calculate the output. That's it, it shouldn't start playing audio. It shouldn't be printing the output. None of that's in the name, so don't bloody put it in the function, you silly sausage. <laughs> When I started implementing this as a rule in my scripts, I found that I would start giving functions like really unwieldy names, names like calculate and print output, you know, for example, 
Uh, when you start getting names like this, it's probably an indication that your function has too many jobs. It's probably time to chop it up into a couple smaller functions. It'll be easier to read and look after long term. The main thing you need to remember about coding is that you understand your cryptic hell code now. But give it three months or show your code to someone else and then you will understand how important clean code is because future you will not remember what calc does especially if it does more than just calculate something don't comment everything okie dokie here's one that's going to cause some arguments then <laughs> don't bloody comment everything you'll notice this script does not have one comment not one in fact the longest script in a hoy the survival game i'm making at the moment Let's guess how many comments it has, shall we? It doesn't have 100 comments. No, it doesn't have 100. It doesn't have 10. It doesn't even have 3. But it, in fact, it only has 1. Uh, also, going back to smaller scripts, it's only 130 lines. Right, so why don't I like comments? Because good code should explain itself. As I said earlier with this code, it explains itself. You can tell what it does because it's written well. And it's got good variables, it's got good class and function names, it's logically formatted, and importantly, there's not any clutter. Let's compare it to this. Right, what the bloody hell is this then? It's ugly, right? The first comment is completely redundant. Um, literally, just read the code next to it. The second one belongs in a Word document, or the team's project management board, and the third one should be a conversation with Bill, not a comment on the code. The reason the bottom two are especially bad is they normally live way too long. Imagine Bill comes on, and he sees uh, the comment, and he changes the script around. He adds all the stuff that's been mentioned, he reworks the audio, but he forgets to remove those comments. Well, now you've got obsolete comments floating around your code that no one wants to touch, in case someone else needs them. Don't do this. Just comment carefully. Commenting to explain a slightly baffling chunk of code is sometimes okay if you can't rewrite it to be easier on the eyes. And commenting out like a legal disclaimer at the top of the code or something is also understandable if it's required. But beyond very carefully chosen stuff like this, don't comment, just write better code. <laughs> you don't want to send Alan into hiding again, do you? Classes should have one job. Yes, a classic. Classes should be responsible for one thing. People know it. Not a lot of people actually do it. Right, let's imagine that we want to make a simple AI state machine for a game. Let's say we want our little guy to attack the player if they're nearby. Otherwise, our AI friend is going to patrol around. Also, let's call him Bob. If Bob gets attacked, he's going to run away. Okay, cool. Simple enough. Let's bang that in one big class then, we'll call it uh, NPC behavior. Okay. Oh wait, no. No, we aren't gonna do that. This class would be responsible for all sorts of things. It'd be responsible for figuring out what's going on around the NPC. It's gonna be responsible for like three different NPC behaviors and switching between them all. That's a lot of stuff for one little class to manage. So instead, let's break it up. Bob is gonna have an NPC controller class that figures out what state you should be in, and then a class for each state. This way, we get a more granular understanding of our system, and it's easier to manage and expand. If I want Bob to start foraging for supplies, then I just add a new class for it, instead of adding more complexity to a spaghetti class that does it all. Measure twice, cut once. Okay, this one is about the planning of a wider project. In this book, the author actually goes into some detail about why you should plan differently depending on the scope of your project. For example, if you're planning on building a tiny little single class calculator, like I made in the last video, you don't really need to plan that much. You don't need to figure out the requirements, the structure, etc. all that much beforehand because what's the worst that's going to happen? It's a tiny project. Meanwhile, if you're making a brand new game engine that you're going to use to make a AAA game like GTA 6 or something, that's quite a big project. Uh, if you ever want to stand a chance of finishing it, you'd best prep before you start. You're going to have to figure out what you need in the project, how you're going to build the systems, how they're going to interact with each other. The idea here is that it's easier to measure your project twice, cut the unnecessary stuff, restructure what isn't going to work in the planning phase, because doing this later on is going to cause a hell of a lot of wasted time and probably a healthy measure of scope creep too. So. Don't be silly. If you're making something big, plan your project. Meanwhile, 
If you're making something small, stop planning every aspect and get on with actually making it. There we go, another video done. Yeah! If you haven't seen part one, where I go over some super basic concepts um, for programming and the best ways to learn to program in 2025, it'll be on the screen now. And that's it. If you're new to the community, I make game dev videos for Unity and some more like general uh, programming videos like this one. So if that's your bag, subscribe so you don't miss out. And I'll see you in the next one. Cool. This short series was like seriously a very, very different to what I normally make. But I really enjoyed making it. Um, so um, if you liked the video, then let me know. And thanks for watching. Um, also, on another note, I got a new chair. Well, it's not new, but I got a different chair. It's cool.